Okay, we're starting out with Primo Cad Red, Orange, Cad Yellow, Green, Cobalt, and a Purple mixed with a little White. And then I rolled them into about even balls. And I have little ball, smaller balls of white, and I'm just making a teardrop blend like we normally do, flattening it out. Someone asked me, or Facebooked me, if I could make kind of a rainbow cane. And this is what I came up with. So again, I'm just teardropping them all. I started doing the white ones so that way I didn't get the color on my hand and then I started with the lighter colors because like red gets all over your hand. So just make the teardrop shapes and then push them together. And I showed her the picture of how it came out and depending how you put your pieces together at the end will depend on the pattern you get. So I'm just going to flatten them out here with my roller and that way they could fit through my pasta machine better without straining the gears really. I probably didn't need to show you <laughs> me blending it this much, but it is what it is now. Okay, so I have all my bleds. And so I've done a couple of these already, but I did in the same way I'm going to show you. So first we're going to make a long strip by cutting and stacking. Now you could fold this, but I get a lot of air trapped in. We've done this many times on the canes. So I'm just going to thin it out so I can fit through my machine and run it through dark side to light side until it gets to a setting six is what I did. But depending how hot it is and how sticky your clay is, the thinness is going to be up to you. And then we're going to fan fold. And with my camera being in the way, it was easier for me to kind of flip it back and forth this way. But when I'm not on camera, this is how I do it. I just toss it from hand to hand. And then kind of press it together to get your air out. And then we're going to cut kind of in half if we can. We're going to put the dark together in the middle and pull one end so the white touches or the light color touches itself. And then you're going to reduce it as a triangle. Now you could have, right here I would have, honestly if I would have redone this, 
kept it fat like this and kept all of them fat like this. But I had already reduced the other ones, so I did it this way. But I would have not reduced at this point and kept them fat and then moved right on to the next step and reduced them all afterwards, which you'll see in two seconds when it was a fat triangle, I would have sliced down through the middle of the dark like we're gonna do here. I'm just trying to get it to the right length. It would have just been easier if I would have just kept it a short stack. So I'm slicing down the middle of the dark and it, it would have, that's what have been a lot easier if I would have kept everything fat, but I didn't. So I'm trying to split right down the middle and then I'm going to put the point of the other triangle down in it. And I did the same thing. I made the red one a triangle and then I slit the orange and put it and then pushed it on like this. And then I made the orange was a triangle and then I did it with the yellow. I'm just kind of smoothing the edges here. And we'll repeat again with the blue. So I did red or uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Roy G. Biv. That's how my sister told me to remember the rainbow. Roy, red, orange, yellow, G, green, Biv, blue, violet, indigo, which I didn't put indigo. So again, fan fold. Press it together to get your air out, make an even block, cut it in half. And here I went to do the light on the inside. No, do the dark on the inside. Yep. And then, like I said, I would have left it fat like this, made it a fat triangle, and then sliced down through the middle and put them all together while they're this size. Would have been a lot easier than what I initially started doing but I had already reduced the first one, so it is what it is, but it would have been easier to cut if I left it fat like that. So reducing a triangle, I'm just using my fingers and I'm starting at the top and then working down to the t um, my table, pulling on it here and there, making sure it's all kind of the same thickness. And again, this would have been the easier part if I would have left it fat. This would have made it much easier, but you guys can do that. That's the whole point of me trying things, because then you don't have to try it. You can learn from my mistakes. So this end I cut a little off center, so I'm just going to put it back together, smush it back together, and then recut it. It's not a big deal. Recut back down the middle. Again, kind of feathering the edges a little bit. I'll do the purple one off camera. So now I'm just kind of making it a triangle. I'm just trying to, it's an elongated triangle. The, the purple is kind of taller than the rest. I'm just trying to get it all nice and smooth as I can. So from here, cutting this into length is one, how long you have it or how much clay you use is gonna depend. I think I'm gonna get eight one inch. Um, but how you put these together is really gonna play the role. So you could change these shapes and put them, you know, make the, you could have made the red the point if you wanted to. You could not make it a triangle and flatten the purple out and made it a square. You know, you can manipulate clay in so many different ways. You can get it to do what you want it to do. So again, however you put this together is really going to play a role in what it looks like. So 
so pretty much I'm just kind of pushing them all together. This is just playtime pretty. I mean, really, I'm just playing. I've been stuck home for 11 days now, <laughs> so trying not to go out. I've only gone out like twice in 11 days, once, once in 11 days to go grocery shopping. I'm just reducing again with my pointer and my thumb like we've done. Starting in the middle, working up to the ends. So I'm going to save a chunk of this and I'm going to play with the other chunk. I'm going to reduce it into as a square. Just like I'm saying all those individual pieces, you could have made them square. You can force it to do what you want it to do. And even that distorted end looks cool. So I'm just, this is really soft right now, so I should have let it rest a little while before I played a little bit more, but I'm going to stick two of these squares together and squish them together and then make kind of a pattern of four. Actually, later I took one of the big ones and I cut the flower diagonally from corner to corner, like that slice up there in the upper right. And then I put them together. So this is still really warm. I haven't let it rest at all. I was just going to play with some of these ends, see what I could get. I was going to play with uh, just some slices to see what it looks like. Rolling a lentil, see what it looks like. That was kind of a quick Natasha type. I'm trying to get this one to go square so I can cut slices and lay them together. But I didn't point the corners quite enough, but again, this is really soft and smushy right now. And I still have plenty of this to play with. I hope you guys are doing well. <sighs> I know we're all going broke sitting home. At least in Vermont. The governor is mandated our off the dental offices except for emergency dental procedures like people in pain to be closed until April 15th so and I stopped working April 13th our office closed so about a month off which is crazy and a month with hardly any pay I just stretched it out to see what it looked like In the pasta machine. As you know, I'm not a big purple fan, so putting the purple in the center for me probably wasn't the best idea. I should have done it opposite with the purple on the outside and the red in the center. These are just kind of tester pieces I'm doing. One of them was a little thick, so I'm just slicing it down. 